Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Ryan Manuk. I'm a solutions consultant here at FileMaker, and I'm really excited to be your host for today's Create Your Custom App webinar, where you're going to learn the essential steps in creating your first custom app with material taken from the Create Custom App Success Guide. But before we get started, I have some brief housekeeping notes. So for the best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this webinar with at least a broadband connection. So if you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Again, that number is 888-259-8414. Now, during today's presentation, you'll have the opportunity to type in and ask questions. So let's talk briefly about how to do that. Just go to the control panel, click on the question section, enter your question and click on send. So we'll try to cover as many questions as time allows at the end of our presentation. But remember, you don't need to wait until then to submit a question. And now I'd like to introduce you to David. He's the president of Angel City Data, a Platinum FileMaker Business Alliance partner based out of Los Angeles, California. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, it's good to be here today. I'm very excited uh, to help uh, shine a light on how to create custom apps with FileMaker Pro. Uh, as Ryan said, uh, we're in the greater Los Angeles area, Burbank to be precise. Our sort of our, our company mantra is beautiful business software. We like to build stuff that looks good and works good for our customers. Uh, we've been an FBA Platinum member and reseller for quite a while, and uh, we're also a three-time Excellence Award winner. So we know our way around the FileMaker world pretty well. Um, one of our assumptions for this, this uh, session today is that you understand that there's this really great series that FileMaker has created for uh, for the new app developer that is uh, guidelines on how to get started building your own custom app. And it's sort of a, a three-pronged approach, uh, how to plan, and then how to create, and then how to deploy. And I want to kind of just drop you in really quickly. Uh, the plan uh, PDF, there's a copy of it here, and it's available on the FileMaker website. It's got some really great, uh, some, some really great tips on how to organize uh, your data, how to evaluate your goals, uh, how to execute, uh, and how to identify the different users. Uh, you know, like we like to say, uh, you know, measure twice, uh, cut once, right? So from that standpoint, a good plan, a good set of documents that are going to act as your blueprint uh, are, are such a great time saver, and they're such a great way to help get organized. Uh, and, and so from that standpoint, the second guide, which is sort of a dovetail fit to that, is the Create Guide, and it's a PDF as well available. We're going to basically kind of do a light breeze through of this document. Uh, we're going to kind of show some examples and give you some insights in this. But it's a great resource, again, for how to build things and to get into some of the specifics of how FileMaker works and how you need to identify specific areas of your database and the types of tools that you're going to want to use in those areas. So I want to make sure that you're aware these two great uh, resources exist, uh, followed by the deploy one, which we'll mention later. But uh, this is, these are, it's such a really great series to kind of help get you oriented and get you on the right path uh, so that your, your app has a great uh, chance of succeeding within your, your, your work group. So let's get started. Let's talk about how we move forward. Let's just assume we've got a plan and we want to get started the actual creation of that app. A couple of different ways of doing it from, from FileMaker Pro. Uh, one of the first that I always sort of enjoy is, uh, you know, is basically pulling data in from a spreadsheet. I may have a, a list uh, or started grouping some data uh, into a spreadsheet, and I go, wow, this is sort of what I want. Now I want to get that into FileMaker. Uh, I'm going to show you that in a second. You can also just open FileMaker and start creating a brand new, uh, a brand new database from scratch, if you like. If you're more comfortable identifying, you know, what your tables are and your list of fields, you can absolutely go that route. And then the starter solution, one of my favorites. It's uh, there's all these great templates that are built in from FileMaker that you can use, and they get you quickly up to speed because some of them have some really great sort of scaffolding in them that you can use uh, instead of having to spend all this time on on a lot of minutia. So let's take a quick look uh, at at a couple of these options here. Um, 
I can grab a spreadsheet. I've got this spreadsheet here, and it's got uh, rental car tracking. You can rent exotic cars from this company, and I just pulled it down. I thought it'd be fun to look at. Maybe I want to rent a, a Lamborghini uh, Aventador for $3,500 a week. Well, maybe not, but uh, I want to use this as a model and just show you the ease at which I can grab a spreadsheet, drag it onto the FileMaker icon, and it is just asking me, hey, do you want to use that first row of data for field names? I'll go, yeah, sure. And it's going to basically punch this thing out into a FileMaker database. So boom, as easily as that, my data is now in a, in a much more powerful engine than, than a spreadsheet in that uh, I've got multiple columns and fields. I can do sorting uh, natively. I can share this uh, instantly on a server. I can get this onto iPhones, iPads. Uh, I can have it set to be backed up uh, in a served environment. So there's so many advantages of getting your data out of those flat uh, single user spreadsheets into a multi-user platform like FileMaker where you can get it on a server, host it, and, uh, and then start sharing your data with others. Uh, now, of course, this is a real simple view of the data, but that's not quite as sexy or as usable uh, as, as one might hope sometimes. I like using the starter solutions in FileMaker. I think they're a great entry point, especially for a new developer. So I can just go up to that menu for Get Started. And by the way, guess what? We're using the brand new version of FileMaker, FileMaker Pro 15, uh, just shipped yesterday. So the, the community of developers that use FileMaker, very excited about it. So uh, from this Get Started screen, I've got a number of things that I can do, but I want to just kind of peruse the starter solutions and maybe pick one that I feel is going to suit my needs. So this is a great way to kind of get started. Um, so literally clicking that one button and now I have this template in the background called content management. And again, it's, it's ready for me right now to start dragging and dropping information into. So sort of for a business model, I'm a former record producer and I worked on a lot of projects and maybe when I get to be 65, I'm going to open a, a used record store and I need a system to keep track of my, my used records. Well, over here, I've got maybe a collection of album artwork, uh, et cetera, on various things. So maybe I want to just drag some artwork in here and you know I could come in here and call this uh, Full Moon Fever is the name of the album. There's Tom Petty. So as you can see this solution is already storing my data. I can use some of the fields that are in here. Uh, I can you know enter uh, data and so forth and that's a great way to get started getting your data into FileMaker so that you can kind of begin to start using it. So just because I've got data in a database doesn't mean I'm finished. You want to take time in your database to organize your data into logical groupings. You don't want to put uh, you know, real estate properties into the same area that you might keep a list of contacts or product inventory. So that's why you want to be very um, you want to be very organized in how you logically group those entities or things that belong together. Uh, and so that's a really key part of getting that planning stage right. As you start identifying workflows and so forth, uh, you're going to want to start grouping things together like contacts all belong together and maybe time entries uh, belong together and maybe uh, inventory or product uh, listings belong together. Once you have those entities sort of broken out, if you will, then the next job is to go, well, see, sure, I have contacts. What are some of the fields that I might want in a contact table, like first name, last name, city, state, zip, et cetera? Um, you can see from this example, an entity might be a list of cars, like we saw in our uh, little uh, spreadsheet demo. Some of the attributes, the things that describe a car, might include manufacturer, model, year, color, horsepower, price, things of that nature. So you want to group your data into these logical buckets uh, so that you have the most amount of flexibility when you're doing reporting and other things about that. So I'm going to show you how we're going to add some entities or fields <clears throat> to the system that we have here. I'm going to 
just grab a copy of what we just created and it's got all of my uh, let's just say it's got all of my album artwork in here oopsie getting a little there we go so it's got some album artwork in here and a collection of those but you know I, I want to enhance my attributes or my list of fields here I want to kind of change things around uh, based on what I have here so I'm going to go into the layout mode um, and I'm going to I'm just going to get rid of this description field I don't feel that I need that uh, but I'm going to go in and create some additional fields so I'm in my contact management uh, database table I can see the list of fields that I have you know I don't want to use the name uh, name for a field I want to change that to the word title that seems like it fits better with my album collection and you know I actually might want to have something like an artist field so that I can identify that so I'm going to type in artist tell FileMaker to give me another text field there and maybe I'm going to put in a genre field so I want to keep track of the kind of uh, music that's on that album and let's just add one more field like a year field I want to know the, the release year and because that might be something I want to sort uh, in ascending order numerically I'm going to make that a, a number field so I can do these these quick changes to my system those fields are now inside the database and you can see that that name got changed to title but what I'm going to do right now is add those fields I just created they're available in my field picker here this is not difficult I can just go in here and say hey let's grab my artist field let's put it up above there and of course I can spend some time and make this look nice and, and, and format it and so forth I'm, I'll do that a little bit later but um, I'm gonna grab my genre field and maybe put it down there and then I'll grab you know maybe I'll put ear down below here or something so now if, if I go back into browse mode I now have the availability of being able to put in whatever I'd like in those fields I've created new storage attributes so I can just type in some some nice information there and maybe I'm going to say this is oh let's just say 2001 I'm guessing here and I could type in uh, rock as the genre if I want to so I'm giving myself really great uh, attributes and fields that are going to help make my data richer and more meaningful to me and again it's not that difficult to do so you know one of the things that's sort of interesting that I have in here is I have these things that are pull down lists or, or maybe a calendar picker things that help my data entry uh, go a little more seamless and a little quicker so let's try to see if we can do that for our genre field so once again I'm in layout mode I'm going to grab that genre field and over here in FileMaker I have this thing called an inspector and it tells me the properties of whatever I've highlighted so I'm going to go over to this inspector and over here I have a control style area where I can say let's create a drop-down list for this system and I want to create a brand new drop-down list and I'm going to call that drop-down list genre and of course I can go in here and type rock or jazz or comedy or whatever I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna just go over here I've got a, uh, a list I had a list there we go genres let's grab that I'm gonna just copy that list of genres and I'm gonna paste those in there and so what I've just done is added a value list to this field so that when I click into it I can quickly and easily uh, account uh, this oh this is a swing band and so I can put those sort of elements and and again ensure that my data is being entered quickly and consistently uh, with with using uh, a value list for that data entry so that's a great way to kind of get that that data into your system one of the other things that you have the capability of in FileMaker you know I think we've all heard the term relational database it sounds sort of uh, powerful and, and mysterious but uh, it is absolutely powerful it is uh, a mechanism by which you link things together uh, that belong to each other so for instance I might want to have in my database an artist uh, table where I want to keep track of Tom Petty and I want to link that artist to every record that he's ever done uh, damn the torpedoes or, or uh, full moon fever or what have you so I can link that one artist to those multiple uh, related albums and not have to do data entry in each album I can just link it and then have that sort of mechanically uh, belong to each other so we use relationships in databases for things like 
linking line items to an invoice, uh, linking multiple phone numbers to a single contact, uh, linking multiple appointments to a single uh, day or person. So one of the things that you want to be careful of is this is one of the more uh, uh, carefully planned areas of your database. If you find yourself in a database creating fields like description one, description two, description three, or appointment one, appointment two, or appointment three, if you catch yourself doing that, that's probably time for you to look at possibly uh, going into a relational model that might be a little more beneficial. And let me give you an example of how a relationship is already baked in to this content ma management system that we've used. Uh, we have this notes area down below. Now, I could just have a, a, a simple notes field, but I can come in here and say, this rocks, and I've got a note in here that's been entered. It has my initials, the date and the time, and I've got the ability to come in here and say, um, you know, I want to put in some more uh, some more notes. This was produced by T-Bone Burnett. Uh, so I can put in unlimited notes. Each one of them has its own date and time. And this, I can go on forever. So I can have unlimited notes here. And I don't have to uh, have multiple fields to do that. So the way that is done, and we're not going to get into this in too much depth, but in the manage database area, you have the ability to see the tables of data, the fields within those tables, and the relationships between the tables. So already built into this demo is the ability for one piece of content. You can see this little crow's foot here, um, which is you know many, many uh, notes can be associated with it. So I think it's a really great uh, mechanism that allows you to kind of build that sort of uh, productivity uh, and extensibility, that scalability of having unlimited actions or unlimited notes uh, or unlimited line items on an invoice. So that's the power of relationships. Uh, you're going to want to take a look at that. Uh, there's some great training materials on the FileMaker website. And I think that it, it's an area that bars special attention. I think that uh, designing layouts and building some automation and scripts and adding fields is a relatively, uh, I think those are relatively simple uh, in that respect, but getting your head around what belongs in a table and how those tables link to each other, that takes a little bit of time to grok. Once you get it, your databases are going to be smaller, more powerful, better reporting, less typing, less errors uh, from typing the same thing over and over. So it's, it's really a great capability of adding power to your system. So invest a little bit of brain power in getting your head around relationships because it's, uh, it's going to pay off well for you. So the other parts, you've seen us create uh, calculation or pardon me, straight fields, regular attributes and fields that describe our albums. We put in a year field and a genre field and so forth. But one of the other things that we can do is we can create calculation fields. These are fields that return data you know, generally text and numbers are the most common, but um, they, it can also return, you know, dates or times or even uh, pictures, images, anything that can be stored in a container field. So calculations are very similar to formulas in spreadsheets, and they allow you to do some kind of cool things. Um, so I'm going to see if I've got the right copy of this open. I do. So let's just say I've got, you know, I put something in here and I say this is rock genre. I want to go in and, and create a little helper field that's going to use a calculation. So I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to create a field called class. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make that a calculation field over here. And I hit create, and FileMaker knows, oh, you're asking for a calculation field, so I'm going to give you this, this formula dialog, this calculation area where I can pick to use fields, I can pick uh, various types of calc formatting uh, or evaluation tools and use them in my formula. So I'm just going to try to do a, uh, I'm going to see if I can do this in real time. I'm going to use a case statement. And I'm going to say case, uh, the genre field equals, um, let's just say comedy, or genre field Let's just say this. I'm going to see if I do this right. This is going to end up really nicely if I do equals, let's just say, poetry. 
then what I want to have happen after that, I can say if that is the case, then I want to make sure that we're going to call this, uh, let's just say spoken word. And if I don't have that condition met, then I want to use the term music. So what I've basically done is put in a formula for my class field that says if the genre is comedy or poetry, we're going to call this a spoken word classification, otherwise music. So I've just built that calculation. And if I want to, I can let's just say I want to drag that field out here. And if I change this to country, it is a music class. If I change it to comedy, ah, it automatically toggles over to spoken word. So again, instead of me having to go in and search for country and rock and jazz, I can literally maybe just go into my, my search window here and say, hey, I want to find all of my, um, I want to find all of my music. Did I do that right? Class. Uh, let's just say I want to find all my spoken words. It's not working right for some reason. Well, if I do this right, if I do this right, what it does is it turns into this. And I can do uh, comedy, country, et cetera. And then I can search by any of those uh, types of criteria. So you can see how a formula and the use of these calculations can help you derive content really quickly uh, from other data that you may already have in your system. Um, next up, how do I want to present my data? So I've got all these great you know, fields. I've got my tables of albums. I've got my fields, genre, and so forth. There's many different ways I might want to present that data. So there's a number of mechanisms for being able to create. Maybe I want to create an iPad uh, screen for doing an inventory check. Or maybe I want to build a, a web uh, form using FileMaker WebDirect so that uh, visitors to my to my website can see what I have in inventory. So these are all different sort of use cases where I might want to build a different layout. And again, uh, picking a theme that's going to look the way I want, choosing the output or the device that I want, and then arranging which fields uh, and tailoring that screen for that use. So for for my example. You know, I think I want to use a, um, I'm going to just start with this field, with all of my fields in order here. And let's just say I want to run, I want to create a, a report that shows me my inventory uh, grouped a certain way, you know, maybe by genre. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into layout mode, which allows me to design any of my screens. I can modify what I've got here. But look at this lovely little uh, wizard that we've got. We've got this new report wizard. And again, I can say I want to show records from, from my content management table. We'll call this report. And I can pick which type of device. I can see if I want it to be one of these or, or an iPhone or something. But for this particular use, I'm going to say this is going to be a print output. And I want it in a report format. So now there's other options that come my way. I can go, great, do I want to show uh, subtotals or grand totals or what have you? I'll do that later. I'll show you sort of a final version. But for right now, all I want to do is bring over maybe my image, uh, the artist, the title, of the, um, the title of, the, of the album, and maybe the year. So I've just added those. Uh, now it's saying, hey, do you want to group them by certain things? I can say, not, not for the moment. For right now, I want this to, to be a simple thing, and we'll uh, maybe we'll, you know what, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to say, yeah, we're going to bring over genre. And instead of just having this a simple thing, we're going to group this by genre. So we're going to make this broken out by the various types of genres, and that makes this report more powerful. So how do I want to sort records when I come here? Well, by genre and artist. I also have the options of going, hey, I can put a page number or the date and the time or any of that in these areas of the header and footer. We'll pull those off for the moment. And I can also choose to create a script. But we'll do that, we'll do that separately later. But what I want you to see is that already, without doing anything, we sort of got a report that shows some of our data in a different format than what we had there. So let's go in here and clean this up a little bit. I've got my, um, I'm going to show, 
Uh, I have a genre area here. I want to make my, let's just make my uh, body part a little bigger. Maybe I'm going to make this uh, image. We'll make this, drag this out, make it a little bigger. We'll put the title below the artist. Uh, we'll put the year below there. I don't know that I need to have my genre field. And I'm going to stretch these out just to make sure we have enough room. So me just doing a little bit of dragging made things a little nicer. So I can even go a step further and I can pull these things off. And now I've got this sort of printout of all of my stuff that I, that's much more portable. I could print this out to a PDF or share it with somebody. And again, by using some of the report capabilities of FileMaker, um, we can even, what we just did is we sorted by the genre field and FileMaker said, oh, we built this report to break out those sections. So now I can see my comedy, my eclectic, my folk, here's all of our jazz, here's all of our rock. So we've got some pretty meaningful data here just by creating a layout and arranging the data that we already have uh, in some pretty interesting ways. So that's sort of a really kind of cool way to be able to just kind of repurpose my layouts for the different types of form factors. You know, So if I'm using print, I can use smaller fonts. If I'm working on an iPad, I might want to have uh, less fields uh, to, to tangle with. Again, we'll talk about this in design in a little bit. So one of the key areas of power for me as a, when I was a young developer in FileMaker, man, I absolutely got thrilled when I started getting into scripting. And scripting is sort of like a macro uh, type of thing in a spreadsheet program. But it's really automation. It's, it's basically this engine in the background of FileMaker where you can put commands together in a very English-like manner and sit there and go, hey, I want to go to this layout. I want to print this. I want to then email it. I want to sort. I want to go to the next record. So using the scripting engine, instead of having your users have to manually uh, change layouts or remember all of the steps regarded to create a specific report, you can build this programming-like interface where you can sit there and put in these commands, attach it to a button, and magic happens. So it's a really great thing. It's very fun. And I'll give you an example of how we might do something like that. I'll go into uh, layout mode on this particular screen. And I'm going to just go grab a button up here. Uh, my button pop over. I'm going to just grab, matter of fact, I'm going to grab this button, put it over here. And I'm just going to call it report for the moment. So I've got this report button. It doesn't do anything. I click on it. It says, hey, it does nothing. Well, thank you for nothing. Let's see if we can add some magic to it. So I want this to perform a script, which is, again, that's the FileMaker automation engine. Now I've just said specify a script. Well, these are existing scripts or routines that are inside a FileMaker. I want a new one. So I want to create a new one for that report that we just created a minute ago. So I'm going to call this my genre report. And you can see I've got this little workspace here where I can pick from any number of features, any of these commands over here that work with different areas of the system, and I can pull those in and use those as steps to execute in my script. So it's, it's, it's really kind of cool. You're, you're kind of doing a, a monkey see, monkey do thing here. So I'm going to start with building this out. I'm going to say first thing I want to do, I can just start typing and I can see a list of commands. Uh, I want to show all my records in the database. Maybe I want to then sort them. I've got that sort that works off of uh, what I've got in there. So I'm going to start typing sort. And I do want to sort the records in my database. I'm going to want to specify by genre, by artist. I can also go, yeah, and I also want to see year in there. So I'm telling FileMaker, when I run this button, grab all my records, get all my albums, sort them by this. Um, I do not want to have this dialog on. So there's options within each of these, and you can kind of poke into these things and see what they are. So we'll sort those records. Well, that means I'm going to be on my current screen sorted, but I've got that nice report layout. So let's go to layout, specify which layout. Oh, there's that report layout I created. I want to use that. And because I want it to uh, 
aggregate and group and look proper on paper, I'm also going to want to make this enter preview mode. And once I've done that, I'm going to probably let the end user, I'm going to pause that. So first, I'm going to grab all the records. We're going to sort it. We're going to take them to the proper report layout. We're going to put it in preview so they can see what it looks like. From there, they can choose to print it or what have you. And if they don't, I'm going to go into browse mode and then take them back to the original layout. So I've really just chained together six simple, easy to read commands into this little engine, um, which I, I just love. It's the FileMaker scripting engine. And of course, I've created all this. I've attached it to my button. Uh, I, can, I can do other things with this button. I can change the formatting, maybe put an icon on it, any of those types of things. But let's see uh, if I got this perfect. Um, maybe I didn't, but we'll find out. So I'm going to click this button, and it just took me to the report layout. It sorted everything. It grouped it. It put it into a preview mode. So I can crank this out as a PDF or, or print it right from where I want. And you'll notice we put that pause in there. So the user has a chance to interact with the data here, print or do whatever. Maybe they just want to look at it. And when they hit continue, it takes them back. So that's, um, that's kind of cool. We just built a really simple report. Show me my inventory. What do I have by each type or genre? And I can see those in real quick fashion and then come right back to where I was. So that's the power of the scripting engine, which I think is really fun. Uh, it's the funnest part of FileMaker. Uh, it's also... Um, it's one of the areas that it's a deep pool of capabilities. There are so many things that you can do with scripting in terms of importing or exporting or opening files or sending emails or uh, running a process or changing a color of an object on a screen or other things. There's all sorts of things that you can do with scripts that add power and elegance. Uh, to your system. So it's something that as you explore them, you're going to find more and more opportunities to kind of go down that path. So, you know, one of the things that is, uh, is sort of powerful about data, you know, I always tell business owners, if you're just collecting your data, you're playing defense. If you use that data to drive business results or to improve processes or efficiencies, you're using data for offense, and that's what I like. So once you have collected that data, what can you do with it? Well, we just showed how we can have reports uh, that are generated from our, our data. We've got some examples here. This is sort of a sample sales report, and you can see that it's it, we have things grouped by the year with grand totals by year. Here's the previous year, etc. You can also do dashboards. By looking at your data, using some of the calculations like we just did, and then even using a chart interface, which is also built into FileMaker, you could perhaps do some bar charts, line charts, um, pie charts, and other mechanisms. But again, imagine what you would have if you logged into your system and could see how many records did I sell today, or what are my top uh, genre of albums for this year. Uh, etc. So I think, or who are my top sellers uh, within our store? Um, I think that might be really good use of your data, and you're, you're now letting your data help drive uh, your performance and your business and, and the decision making. So I think it's really critical uh, when you go through that, that planning phase to ask yourself, what are the kinds of things I'm hoping to collect from my data so that I can then, again, uh, collect that data and purpose it in a way that's going to be really visible and help me drive results uh, from the data that I've got. So by the way, and I want to just jump off, I've got sort of this demo right here. I've got sort of a full version of it that's a little cleaner, a little nicer. I built an icon over here. But just by adding one extra thing, I put a little uh, I put an extra field down here, a summary field, which is sort of like a calculation. But right now, I can see what the total of my inventory is and by each genre. So very quickly, this is, again, it's sort of a measurable, uh, a measurable piece of data. I've got 11 albums. I've got four rock albums, et cetera. So you can see this is in a very junior sort of fashion, a, a very useful uh, uh, piece of data that I can report on from within my system. So 
we're kind of, you know, kind of in this interesting place. We've just opened a template, added some attributes, some new fields, created a value list to help simplify the data entry, uh, put in a calculation field to help uh, to help provide some logic based on the data that I already have. We've shown you how you can create a new layout uh, that you maybe want to use for reporting, or maybe we do a different layout for iPhone users or for web users. But you know, again, creating a different view of the data that you're already collecting, very powerful. Uh, and then once we've got that data collected and presented, we can use automation to help navigate or sort or present that data in different ways. And obviously, reporting is, is what do you intend to do with that data, whether it's printing out an invoice or looking at quarterly metrics, uh, anything and all between. So we've sort of gone through, you know, in a real breezy fashion, some of the cores of creating a, 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 an app inside a FileMaker. Some other things to think about. These are sort of anecdotes uh, to think about. What about design principles? You know, we, we got uh, questions in our earlier session. Can you build a desktop screen that's going to work on an iPhone? Yes, technically you could, but that's not paying attention to the device and the environment that it might be used in. So you want your designs to factor in who is the user, what are the tasks that they're doing, and what kind of device are they going to be using, and even where are they going to be using it. So for instance, if we're building something that's going to be used in bright sunlight, we're going to use very sharp, high contrast items. We might not do that for something that's going to be in an office. So to give you a sense, I want to just give you three examples here of, uh, of different types of screen designs and for the purposes they serve. This is a desktop screen for you know, a relatively good sized company's order tracking system. And I've got full navigation over here to the side. Nice iconography. I've got multiple tab panels that allow me to keep track of multiple things that are deeply entrenched in here. I've got highlighted very, very appropriately up at the top of the screen key information about this. I've got logical data groupings. These are all the dates that are important. These are, are the order specifics. These are the sales specifics. So, and I've got lots of buttons, and they can be relatively small because guess what? I have a mouse that allows me to point and click at those. So this is sort of indicative of what we feel is a good, beautiful desktop design. Now, if I'm on the iOS, I don't want to have dozens of fields. I don't want to have a tremendous amount of, of features um, because my, my team out in the field, this is a sales tool for a medical device uh, company, I want to have the two or three metrics that are key to me and be able to tap on them and see data behind that. Here's some lesser uh, pieces that I might want to see. Here are uh, maybe some metrics. I want to just tap these buttons and get to them. <clears throat> and then three or four areas that I want to move around. But point being, I don't want the end user to jump into this system and have to weed my way through deep, deep, deep screens with lots of fields on them. This needs to be succinct and fast. And one of the other things you'll notice, when you're using an iOS device, your thumbs are naturally going to follow uh, on the sides or on the bottom of the device. You'll notice we don't have a lot of buttons uh, in the middle of the screen. We have a lot of the points that are going to open or do things for you near the edges, just so that the user doesn't have to reach their hand over the top of the, of the display uh, screen, blocking most of their data to touch uh, pieces of data that are interesting to them. And then FileMaker WebDirect, uh, which is uh, a technology that came about a few years ago, which allows you to get your FileMaker data published into the web so that uh, users with browser access, they don't have to have a full install of FileMaker. They can use it on their, on their mobile phones now with FileMaker 15, uh, and also you know, Mac, Windows, multiple flavors of browser. But same deal, this is a less powerful environment than the full desktop version of FileMaker. So again, you want to make your, your interaction, um, you want to make it task specific. This is a time entry screen that we built uh, for a customer where they can just very quickly identify three or four things, click a button to enter the current time or increment it up or down, enter that time, see their total time. So again, we don't have tremendous amount, lots of navigation, lots of folder tab panels, lots of that, 
this device and this environment was meant to be a very small group of users that just needed to enter time where maybe the manager uh, of, a, of a solution needs a, a much bigger screen with a lot of other related areas. So again, that's where you want to factor that into your designs. Other things to think about, your security. <clears throat> um, if you're going to have multiple users jumping into a system that you've built, you want to identify what those roles are. You know, who are those people? And they talk about this in the planning guide, but who are those people and what are they doing with the data? I'm, I'm out in the field, I'm collecting data, or I'm in the warehouse and I'm taking pictures of our inventory, or I'm in the accounting department and I'm creating invoices. So to know what those roles are helps you define which accounts, accounts belong to people. So I want to say, uh, Marsha in the billing department belongs to the accounting privilege set. So FileMaker provides you with accounts that are person specific and privilege sets which are group specific. And so therefore I can create a sort of an accounting uh, group, attach multiple uh, people to that with their accounts and they'll all inherit the same type of security. Um, but security very important. It's going to it's going to determine who can do what in your system and what you need to protect. Uh, FileMaker also allows you to bind your security with with your IT department's uh, Active or Open Directory. So if you guy if you've already got those tools in place, you're going to be able to leverage that to help manage your security better. Uh, FileMaker again full SSL capabilities uh, for the transmission of your data you know, to and from your end clients, you want that to be encrypted and some industries, that's very critical. So that's a great thing to factor in. And FileMaker also has the ability to encrypt your data as it sits on the hard drive. So even if somebody were to uh, try to attack the files themselves, uh, you've got some extra protections there. So you want to give thought to the security aspect. And one of the things that we just saw, well, Dave just happened to build a report, and it went perfectly, almost. Uh, but, but there are times when you can build something, everything looks like it's working right, and then you hand it to an end user, and they push the wrong button, or they enter data that's not expected, or they don't have the right permissions in their uh, security settings to do exactly what they should be able to. Testing is incredibly important and it's magnified by the amount of people that you're going to be sharing the application with. So um, use a team of people. If you've got Marsha in the accounting department and Sam out in the warehouse and they have different workflows and different areas of focus, you're going to want them to each test their, their areas of the system before you go live. It's, it, it's sort of like you don't want to move into a house walk through it and, you know, turn on all the light switches, try all the water faucets, you know, make sure the outlets are working because it's a bigger deal once you move into it and all of a sudden these things don't work, right? So from a testing standpoint, you want to really make sure, get your users involved, let them use it based on the way they work with their data. You will find little tiny rub spots or little tiny things that may not work quite right um, and that you can, you can, uh, very quickly sand down and fix, polish those out, and then get them back. So that's the other part, too, that's a real critical thing. Your testing shouldn't be, I gave it to Marsha, she found four things wrong, I fixed it, now we go live. Nope, it should be, Marsha found four things, I fixed it, Marsha, can you give us another pass? Let's test that once again, make sure everything is very nice and smoothed out, everything's working right, all the different user levels are, are happy with it. Then to go live, you're going to have a much more seamless and less uh, problem, uh, less problems uh, with, with any sort of problems in your system. It's going to be less, um, less difficult to deal with those things once everybody's in there. One of the other things waiting on the other side of this is, again, we've, we've sort of covered a good chunk uh, in a very fast fashion of that PDF on create. So, you know, I've planned my database, I've got some good insights on how to create it. Once you're feeling good about your database and, and go, wow, I really got this thing working well, it looks good on my iPad, looks good on my desktop, I really want to start 
sharing this with my users, there's a third uh, PDF that's available on the FileMaker website, and it's about deploying the system. And so how do I successfully get this uh, off my laptop, put it onto a server where FileMaker can be, uh, FileMaker server can help me host this, make it available to multiple users in real time, manage backups, manage security, uh, and handle the kinds of things that are going to be asked of it. So there's a really great guide that you're going to want to factor in um, that's, that's focused on the deployment. So once you've planned it and then you've built it, you're going to want to kind of thumb your way through this PDF as well. It's got some really great uh, insights, again, into uh, the performance enhancements that you get with FileMaker Server, some of the security benefits, uh, the automatic backup capabilities that are that are uh, built into FileMaker Server. So it's it's a it's a good drop in the bucket uh, to get you focused on the right areas there um, and and so forth. So I think uh, if if you get to the point where you're through the end of your creation side of things and you're going, wow, I'm feeling ready, I've got it well tested, etc. Time to get out that deploy guide and start looking through that to to kind of get some good best practices on how to do that safely and correctly. Excellent. So um, what do you think, Ryan? I think it's time to open it up to some uh, Q&A. Uh, first of all, thank you, David. Fantastic webinar. A lot of great information there. And if you guys haven't already, go to the GoToWebinar control panel, click on the question section, enter your question, and click on send. All right, David, let's go ahead and start it off. We have a great question about setting up a script. So can you create a script to open another FileMaker database to a related record? David, are you there? Hi, I'm sorry. Um, that's a great question. So there's, there's two parts of that question. Can I open a related record from an existing uh, screen using a script? Absolutely. And that does not require a separate FileMaker file. That can just be a related table uh, inside the file. So yes, there's a go to related record uh, script step that is used all the time by most uh, FileMaker developers. But to answer the other question, if you have another file, maybe you have an inventory control system and you want to be able to get to that inventory control system, maybe from your contact management system, yeah, you can absolutely create a button and then tell it, uh, I want to go open that file. So it's, it's really not, uh, I'll just show you really quickly. Um, that you can go in here, again, create a new script, and just come in here and say, um, open file right there. And once I pick that, it'll ask me, where is the file? Point it to it on your hard drive or on your network, and FileMaker will let me uh, open that file up from within there. So yes, absolutely. Perfect. The next question, can you touch on the differences between FileMaker Pro and FileMaker Pro Advanced? Good question. Uh, you guys might, the sharper ones of you might have noticed that I am using FileMaker Pro Advanced. FileMaker Pro, out of the box, lets you do, I don't know, 85% of what you need to do in the FileMaker uh, development uh, sphere. It lets you create layouts. Uh, there's nothing that I've done today that can't be done in FileMaker Pro. So there are additional things in FileMaker Pro Advanced that if you're doing a lot of development, it can really be helpful. It helps things like uh, script debugging. Uh, so for instance, if I'm in my solution here, I have the capability of turning on script debugging. And when I click my button here, it's actually going to walk me through you know, all of the steps in my thing. And I can see where something might go wrong or whatever. So if you're having to debug uh, your scripts, uh, there's a data viewer, there's the ability to create uh, self-contained runtime files, etc. So there's, there's a number of things that, uh, if you're using FileMaker Pro daily to do uh, development, you're going to want FileMaker Pro Advanced. But you can create good, solid working databases just using FileMaker Pro out of the box. Excellent. The next question, uh, back to scripts. If you create scripts in a file, do you have to duplicate those scripts in another, rec in another uh, file? Or can you use 
the same scripts? That's a good question. You can um, copy script steps or scripts themselves and move them between files. So let's pretend I've got a file that I put some nice navigation uh, scripting into. I might be able to copy that and go into the, the alternate file, create a new script, paste that in, uh, and have almost every, have everything work. Now, when I say almost, uh, there are times where I might, let's just say I grabbed the report script I just created, and I'm sorting on genre and artist. Well, if I copy that script into a, let's just say a contact database, and I don't have a genre field or an artist field, that part of the script step is going gonna, is gonna to be an error. So uh, you do save yourself time by being able to copy scripts and paste them into other files. Um, but you have to be careful that things on both sides are pretty equal or it can cause uh, unexpected errors on the destination side of where you paste it. So very time saving, uh, but pay very close attention uh, to, to that on the destination. Perfect. The next question about creating layouts. When you're in the new layout wizard and you choose iPad, will FileMaker know the difference in screen size when it comes to iPad mini, iPad, or an iPad Pro, or is it a best practice to create a layout for each screen size? That's a good question. I don't know that there's a, there's a perfect answer for that. You know, with the, uh, when you do go into the layout wizard, um, it is going to help you as best as possible with some of these, but you also might be able to go in and lay out a custom uh, device with based on the screen resolution of that. So I think FileMaker and their wisdom gave you some flexibility to do that. Um, there, there is a possibility of creating a screen that, for instance, might work on an iPad mini and can be stretched uh, to fill in maybe a slightly larger um, iPad Pro, for instance. So you might find yourself able to uh, to use screens at both sizes that are that are comparable. I think you want to avoid, you know, a relatively small iPhone screen and a large iPad screen, uh, or a, a larger desktop screen, and trying to use those on devices that are just too small. Uh, you know, the power of the device may not be the same. The amount of real estate may not be the same. So FileMaker does give you uh, the capabilities of knowing that. And if you'll notice in this script, uh, there's a, an opening script, and one of the very first things in this template that comes with it is, hey, what's the current platform? If I'm on a Mac, uh, take me to the content detail screen. If I'm number three, which equals an iPad, then number three means take me to this uh, tablet version of the layout. So FileMaker gives you some great capabilities of determining how the user is coming into your system and let me take you to the appropriate layout for that. So that's, that's why uh, this template has an iPhone screen, which is much smaller. It's really meant, uh, pardon me, it's really meant to be used in more of this kind of screen real estate. And so that's, that's the great thing about it is you have that capability of, of letting FileMaker help determine who's logging in and then take them to which one of the screens that you feel is going to be appropriate for them. Perfect. All right, the next question. Is it possible to create an offline FileMaker Pro app to run on smartphones and tablets? Absolutely. So FileMaker, uh, you can build uh, you can build apps and solutions with FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Pro Advanced. Those are your authoring tools. Uh, but it can be deployed to the web, to the desktop, and also to iOS, uh, you know, iPhone, I, uh, iPod Touch, and uh, iPads using FileMaker Go. So FileMaker Go is available on the App Store and is a consumption. It's a client application. It does not let you create databases, but it absolutely lets you interact with them. So you can, you know, create, edit, and delete records, uh, take pictures, capture information, uh, even send emails and things of that nature. Um, so can you get that database, download it onto your mobile device, and do data collection with it? Absolutely. And a lot of people do that. So you can have that database on your device 
and do what sort of data uh, collection or or interpret in, uh, interpretation that you want to from there. If you're part of a larger group, you have to ask the question, am I going to collect data in the field that I then need to integrate with other data that I have for the rest of the members of my team? And so that's where you want to decide, do I want to have a live wireless connection to the server so that I see changes in real time and my team sees anything I do in real time? Or do I want to have remote collection and then have some sort of sync or importing mechanism that will pull that data off uh, my device and tuck it into the server for the rest of my team to use? Uh, that can be uh, that second option of the sync mo model can be a bit more complex uh, to do. So you have to be careful that you don't have duplicate records being created or two people editing the same record at the same time in different parts of the country. So there's some great uh, syncing tools that are uh, specific for the FileMaker industry that can really help you with that. Perfect. The next question, is it uh, possible to create a solution that can achieve HIPAA compliance? Absolutely. We have a number of customers. Oh, gosh, we have you know, John Wayne Cancer Center and Kaiser Permanente and, and some other customers absolutely uh, have to be HIPAA compliant. Uh, so yes, FileMaker has done a great job, especially with respect to SSL and encryption at rest and a lot of the authentication tools have gotten stronger and stronger with FileMaker over the years. And it's another key point uh, when you talk about HIPAA compliance. It's not a, uh, this is a database checkbox to say it's HIPAA compliant. HIPAA compliance also factors in things like, is the server room locked? Is there you know, extra copies of the database available on hard drives laying around in the hallway? You know, there's a lot of protocol and procedural things about all points of access to the data. So you might want to work with uh, somebody who's got specialty in that area to help make sure any database design and the environment that it's running in are all up to uh, snuff so that you don't have to worry about uh, any sort of data slip ups in that manner. Perfect. The next question, is FileMaker Go available on non-IOS devices? And if not, what are my options? Um, FileMaker is a wholly owned subsidiary of Apple Computer. Apple Computer loves the fact that everybody in the world is jumping on their iOS devices, they're trying to keep that advantage. Uh, and I think it's, it runs incredibly well in that space. It's a, it's a really great tool for that. For the customers out there that uh, have, let's just say, Android devices or other things, uh, one of the great news stories of the last 24 hours is FileMaker 15 just shipped and the WebDirect component of FileMaker, uh, which allows you to share your data in a browser, uh, that is now uh, compatible in other mobile browsers now. So it's not just Apple. Um, you can use Android. There's a, a list of, of compatible browser software for Droid devices that you can absolutely use. So yeah, you actually have a good story. There's a good story there in that FileMaker now can welcome uh, devices that are outside of the Apple uh, scheme to, to be able to interact with FileMaker data um, in the mobile compliant areas. Perfect. All right, last question, and uh, David, what design tools or sites do you use for inspiration? Oh gosh, we we you know we jump all over the web. We've got a pretty good team. A couple of our people are artists. Um, Jake on our team specifically, very strong, uh, and he uses a lot of. We we just look outside. Uh, we look outside of a lot of uh, a lot of different sources for our artwork and so forth. So. I wouldn't say, um, I'm going to just show you just kind of a quick thing. We've got a number of, of really nice screens that uh, we put a lot of attention into. So we really try to look at the customer and how they're working with their data. We try to keep our devices modern looking uh, and, and specific to the area that they are, are trying to work in. But there are some great uh, applications. I like looking at weather applications, and I like looking at notepad applications on the App Store. Uh, because they give us some really good insights in how some designs are changing and so forth. So especially for the iOS, you can just Google, you know, top 30 uh, iOS designs and get some really good insights there. Uh, the Google design guide, the Apple design guide, they all have good inspirations 
they're great resources for how to identify different controls and different ways of presenting your data and different ways of interacting with the data. So there's a treasure trove of design tools out there. Um, but I would start by just Googling, you know, great iOS designs and or great Mac application designs or whatever and see what shows up. Excellent answer. All right, that's all the time that we have for today. On behalf of David and FileMaker, it was our absolute pleasure chatting with you guys, and we definitely hope to see you on another webinar soon. Have a great day. Thank you.